It's time for your Friday edition of Hot News before we get into the weekend. So I hope you're ready because we're going to be starting off strong with some Ryzen 4000 news or maybe, maybe not, maybe Ryzen 5000. Let's talk about that for a second. So there's information coming out of Igor's lab, which is indicating that the 4950X has some really, really good boost clock potential and potentially some really good overclocking potential, which isn't something we've seen from AMD's current line of processors. So the 4950X engineering sample that's been seen has a boost clock of 4.8 gigahertz. So this isn't necessarily representative of what we're gonna get at the end, but it could potentially indicate that it's going to get faster down the line, especially considering that this isn't the first time we've seen an engineering sample of the 4950X, the 16 core 32 thread from AMD based on Zen 3. That actually previously had a boost clock of 4.6. So they've made a 200 megahertz enhancement over the past couple of months which could bode really well for the chip but then following that there's also some information that there might be per core voltage adjustments to the next gen Ryzen processors that are coming out a la the 10th gen Intel CPUs that came out the reason you would want this is because you could have more granular control over the overclocking that you have on each core let's say that you only have a couple cores that can hit that five gigahertz sweet spot you need to give them extra voltage but the other ones don't do so well so you're going to undervolt those well you have more of that niche control which could allow you to get better better single core performance and get the best multi-core performance without having to crash because not all cores can hit five gigahertz. It's a great option. Hopefully this indeed does come out to the next gen Ryzen CPUs. It would be great for any little tinker out there who wants to do something with that. But there's also a rumor, as I alluded to at the beginning of this segment, that AMD might be skipping the 4000 series naming with regards to the desktop processors and just calling them the 5000 series in order to help alleviate any confusion that's been out there considering the fact that there are the Ryzen 4000 U series and H series processors that are in mobile and then there's also the 4000 G series or the chips that are in OEM systems for the APU calling these the 4000 series would indicate that they're somehow in the same generation even though they're not which is also something we've already been dealing with we already have the 3000 G CPUs that are based on Zen plus and not Zen 2 apparently according to this rumor AMD might be fixing that however they've already dealt with it for several generations so do they have to not necessarily we'll see if that actually pans out and there's also some more information coming out with regards to big navi that there are going to be four different versions of the navi 21 gpu the navi 21 xtx xt xl and XE and also the top end ones are going to be broken up by whether or not they have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM or 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, depending on which one you want and how much money you want to spend on it, which is totally fine. 12 actually is kind of good for me, but you know, I'm a tech channel, so I got to get the best one. Why do I have to buy 16 gigs of VRAM? I don't need it right now. I probably will to buy 8K and hopefully hmm, I do need the 16 gigabytes of VRAM to play 8K on my 8K TV. Ha. Huh. Dang, AMD, you make a good argument. And Intel not making a good argument for their processors because while we're expecting the 5950X to have much better performance, the way Intel's gonna sell theirs to you, the 10th gen processors, well, we talked about it in a previous episode of Hot News that there were these KA processors popping up around the world. Well, turns out that that's not because they're just gonna be named something different in different regions. No, it's because they are literally an Avengers promotion box. Intel wants you to buy their processors in order to get the Avengers, which I'm not gonna lie, this totally sells me on it. I totally 100,000% want one, but at the same time, kind of feels like a kid's cereal box promotion. Like, really? Is this, this is kind of Fortnite-y. You're partnering up with the Avengers to sell something. It's kind of a skin. Are, are we doing skins and, and DLC for our processors now? Is that what's happening? I would buy this. I would totally buy this. I'm not even going to judge them. They totally made the right marketing decision. And Logitech didn't have to make any marketing decisions when it came to overselling their webcams because, you know, the whole pandemic and working from home thing did it for them. Well, the CEO and president of Logitech came out and said that they're, they're, they're working on it. OK, we're, we're trying to ramp up capacity. It's just it's so much. There's so many component shortages, which in case you haven't been to a local like brick and mortar electronic shop recently, there's not a lot of stock of anything anywhere. Like we, we, I've gone to Best Buy a couple times because I had to pick stuff up for my 8K TV. Keep flexing about that. And there's just like half of the shelves empty. It's crazy. Like it's not just the fact that people are, have over purchased for home use. It's also the fact that supply chains have been completely disrupted. Certain suppliers have gone into business because they couldn't actually keep their doors open and all of this and couldn't get all of the economic assistance that they needed from the PPP. And it's a whole 
crap show. So Logitech says that they're working on it and we believe you Logitech, we love you, keep doing what you need to do. And OWC trying to get away from what Apple needs to do, which is make overpriced products and accessories for their computers. I did the $700 Apple wheel is what I'm talking about right now. OWC releasing the Rover Pro wheels kit for the Apple Mac Pro at $200, which is far more reasonable for a $35,000 PC. And you want to run a Big Sur on that $35,000 PC, you can now because the Mac OS public beta is now available for the next gen Mac OS operating system. That's really redundant. I'm so sorry. It'd also be kind of redundant for me to fail at a segue because that's what I'm doing here. Anyways, SoftBank approaching TSMC and Foxconn for a potential ARM buyout instead of NVIDIA to kind of go along with the consortium idea that Samsung has pitched to them, which could potentially mean that ARM with its many different customers and giants like availability for everybody idea would then be owned by a whole bunch of companies. And that way it couldn't be owned by one entity and they're selling to multiple entities. This seems to make a lot more sense with the ethos of what ARM is, not necessarily NVIDIA buying them out, but we'll see how it plays out. We'll keep you updated on the ARM debacle as it's going down and Samsung's debacle with the Galaxy Buds Live. Yeah, uh, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, they're the bean pods. They go in your ears and apparently they had active noise cancellation, but all the reviews that I've been reading say they suck. The active noise cancellation is really bad. The sound quality is not great. Nothing about it is cool. It's $170, which is ridiculous. And then it's a trip to the ER when your kid inevitably shoves them in their ear too deep and you have to get them extracted by the fire department. Why do you have to go to the ER to get the fire department? I don't know. Why do you have to go to Samsung to get high quality active noise cancellation? You don't and you don't need to because Sony, their WH-1000XM4 headphones have been unveiled. $350. They're going to be arriving in mid-August and reviews show that they're just better. They're better than the XM3s. I'm still on my XM2s. I love them so much. Best $200 I've ever spent on a headphone. At wireless Bluetooth can connect to multiple devices right now. The XM4 can has better noise canceling than the previous generations, better build quality. It just seems like Sony's doing all the right things. Samsung not. And Google wasn't for a while with the Pixel 4 and 4 XL. They were not well-received phones, and it turns out that Google's done with them. A Google spokesperson in an interview with The Verge basically said that they sold through all of it and they're they're done producing. It's just, we're just, it's over because I, they already fired the head of the Pixel department. So it does seem like they're just trying to move forward with a different version of what they want their Pixel phones to be. The Pixel 4a, obviously, one of the representations of that, a very slimmed down, non-choice setup for their phone. Three $350. This is what you get. We don't have multiple options. There's not a lot that you need to think about. The Pixel 5 will likely have the same idea behind it. It's just going to be simplified and kind of address what the consumer wants. Hopefully that's what what I would want to see. And a lot of people want to see TikTok gone, but Microsoft's trying to make sure that doesn't happen because we've been talking about how Microsoft has been anticipating purchasing the US arm of TikTok. Well, it turns out they're looking to buy the whole thing. Yeah, they're looking to purchase the entire version of TikTok from ByteDance and Microsoft would just own all of it. Microsoft and ByteDance haven't commented on this, but Financial Times sources are saying Microsoft going to buy the whole TikTok, the whole thing. I accidentally a whole Coke can. I don't know what to do, but if you got Doom Eternal, you'll know what to do for your next gen console upgrade because Bethesda announcing that Doom Eternal Elder Scrolls Online will get their PS5 and Xbox Series X versions of the game for free upgrade. And what was a free upgrade for Canon uh, was not securing their website. Apparently, Canon is hit by a ransomware attack. The attackers have apparently stolen 10 terabytes of data, and they're asking that they pay them in order to get access back to all of the databases and websites that have happening to them, which kind of sucks. So Canon, yikes, that's a big yikes. And there's also a big data leak when it comes to Intel. Hackers got their hands on documents with regards to intellectual property data for Intel. Intel came out and said that they understand this. There's not a whole lot known right this very second about what's in the 20 gigabytes of documents that have come out, but we'll keep you updated as we learn more with regards to this Intel saying that they know about it and that they are uh, going to find out who did it, who was responsible, but it's a ton of IP data, which couldn't be good for trade secrets. And it's no trade secret that Apple sucks when it comes to locking down things on their iOS platform. And Microsoft is the latest casualty in that with xCloud being delayed on iOS because the testing has to be halted because their preview test flight period has ended on iOS and they are just gonna work on developing that for Android because Apple's just a big old stinky poo. But stinky poo is not where Nintendo's money bags are because they, they're in the sky. 
they're they're reaching up to new heights nintendo switch announcing that they sold a heckin ton of switches 5.68 million consoles in q2 holy heck which brings the lifetime sales of the console up to 61 million units they also announced that animal crossing's new horizon has sold 20 2 million copies which is crazy which is more than metroid has ever sold and it's now the second best selling switch game of all time holy crap anyways nintendo just continuing to to be amazing but what's not amazing oh this sucks for me horizon zero dawn's pc port is bad from what i can gather which is odd because death stranding just released like last month right and that's built on the exact same game engine and that port was good so it turns out that there's a lot of rendering issues and anisotropic filtering issues and anti-aliasing issues and stuttering issues. Apparently the GTX 1060 performs 40% worse than the RX 580, which makes no sense and there's no reason to explain it. In case you want the full breakdown, Digital Foundry did an entire look through of like just how freaking borked this port is. We'll leave a link down in the video description for you to check that out, but it is not good. And Guerrilla Games coming out and saying that uh, we'll, we'll work on that. And this is after the, the day one patch. They've already released a day one patch and everybody did their testing with that. And it's not, it's not good whatsoever. It's a stuttery, laggy mess. You wanna hit 60 FPS with an RTX 2080 Ti? Good luck. Which is crazy, right? Like, how the, how the heck do you get away with that? $1,200 car can 60 FPS on a game that came out three years ago on the PS4 Pro and was running at 30 FPS. Are you, are you did you tell me? So, like, even in this, look, they're showing that the GTX 1060, at like the exact same settings, is running at 30 FPS when the 580 is at 49 FPS, which is super odd because uh, that makes it perform like a base PS4, not a PS4 Pro, which is terrible. And then also, did Guerrilla Games' own recommended specifications for this game to hit 1080p 60 on original quality was a 580. And it doesn't even do that. Stop it. Fix this. Oh, you, you were the chosen one. But we'll have to wait for the next chosen one, which is Cyberpunk 2077. Ayo, November 19th is when we're expecting the game to come out. And they're going to have their next Night City Wire showcase for the game August 10th this coming Monday. So peep your tunes for that. Keep your eyes on the peep tunes watch the internet to find out more about that and i'm gonna watch the internet now because i'm done with this episode of odd news so i don't have to keep looking at this camera you, you don't even have to keep looking at my face